this is Sean Shaw again with Dinner and Dialogue, another episode. Uh, we are very fortunate enough to have with us uh, Mr. Johnny Dutch. He's a USA athlete, uh, probably known for the 400 meter hurdles, um, and uh, also tried out for the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, Olympics, yeah. Uh, was that 2016 or? Yeah, I tried out 2008, 2012, and 2016. Okay, wow, wow, yeah. okay, awesome, awesome. And he's also a filmmaker, so yes. he's uh, he's kind of parlay into that area of, the, of uh, his creative talents. Yeah. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that. So that's awesome. Again, thank you for taking time out to uh, to speak with us here at Dinner and Dialogue. So, what's going on with this track and field thing? I mean, there's a, this fierce competition in yes. the 400 meter hurdles. Uh, yeah, so, so how's that? How's that going for you? What's the outlook for you from an athleticism perspective? And uh, what can we expect next from you? Well, uh, it's definitely been a process. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. been at it for a while now. Um, I became a professional athlete in 2010, mm -hmm. so I guess it's 2020, it's been a decade now, so wow. it's been a roller coaster. Okay. Um, you know, I've had uh, financial backing as far as, you know, running with companies like Nike and Puma, mm -hmm. you know, to be a, being a free agent, Okay. and so, uh, you know, it's my livelihood, so I train every day, um, compete every summer, Okay. and every four years it's the Olympics, so I've been, yeah. I've been trying out every four years, and so mm -hmm. this will be my last time trying out. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, and will it just be for the 400 meter hurdles? Or yeah. Is there? Okay. Yeah. All right. Some people try out for more more than one event, but one discipline is enough. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I mean, can 400 imagine. hurdles is what? Oh yeah, yeah. Because I hey, I I ran the 400 meters myself. 400 yeah. meters, not hurdles, and did the long jump. Okay. Uh, so you know, so I, I do know the discipline it takes and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the hard work and the dedication. So exactly. Yeah. Because the 400 is an all out sprint. Oh. Right? Yeah. That's crazy. I yeah. Mean, it's all that for yeah. Really. yeah, I mean, I had I had a track coach who wanted me to run the mile because I had really? long legs and oh, yeah. I was, you know, I was pretty quick. But he's like, oh, let's go ahead and put you in the mile. I was like, that's not my thing. <laughs> so I, I totally get it. I totally, yeah. totally get it. You're so, right. uh, so what does that? What does the workout regimen look like? Like, how early in the morning do you wake up? I mean. Diet. I know we're here at Sugar Sugar Factory. I know not we might not want to try to all places, right? But I wanted to test your will. That's why we're here. We want to test your will uh, against the against all the sugar intake. Not be the best example. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so wake up at what? Five in the morning. Four. Well, um, typically, it depends. Every season is different. Okay. Some seasons I'll wait train in the morning for a few hours, and I have to wake up at five, and then I'll train after work at three p.m. Okay. Um, but now. I wake up, go to work, and then at 3 p.m. I train all the way through about six, seven o'clock. Oh wow! And then go to sleep, do it, and you know, repeat again. Um, and then as far as diet, uh, I have a t I usually have a tight diet, mm -hmm. but it's, it's it's difficult for me because I have a, a sweet tooth. Okay. I like yeah. sweets, so yeah. I'll do good for four days. Salads, you know, sweet potatoes, broccoli, and then all of a sudden I'll get a craving for something sweet. Yeah. Um, which is like my bites. Okay. Cookies and stuff. So. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so do you do you cook? Uh, are you a person yeah, that cooks? I can throw down. You, you can throw down. I actually can. Okay now <laughs> you can throw down on what though? I mean I mean grits <laughs> right, grits and scrambled eggs. I mean And that's easy. That is easy. Yeah that's easy. So yeah, you know yeah. when you say throw down because you know I love food and I, I kinda cook a little bit myself so when you say you can throw down I'm I'm expecting some some, something really good yeah like so feeling. yeah like what so you say that uh, what are you talking about I would say I can cook just about anything and that's because I'm greedy you know what I mean it's not okay, <laughs> okay. Now I'm not trained but I'm just greedy okay but um I do real good I think it's pretty easy but cream and mushroom baked chicken okay with rice and cabbage I have a really good cabbage okay, um, okay. You know, stuff like that I can do like a pork chop with gravy um, good at, I can make mashed potatoes really well. I'm great at lasagnas. Oh, okay. Um, now, are your lasagnas that with or without me? Is it with? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I make it without, but uh, generally I have it with. Um, 
Uh, I love breakfast though, so okay. I made pancakes and waffles from scratch though, like no box. Okay, no okay. Box, so. Yeah, I, I just tried that myself. Um, from scratch? Yeah, from scratch. You yeah, know, how did it go? <laughs> it didn't turn out bad. It didn't turn out bad. It wasn't as light and fluffy as I like them, yeah. but um, it was good. It yeah, was there are some tricks to that. Okay. Like I know, I will always, when I first started, I would put in the baking soda, mix mm -hmm. it, yada yada, and then just immediately cook. But um, I think you're supposed to wait like 10, 15 minutes to let it That's set. It. Ah. Yeah. That and I mean okay. that helps. The and whole baking also, thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like bacon. Yeah. And, um, and then also separating. It's something about separating the yolk and the egg white. Right. Right. Okay. Like doing them separately. It's, okay. I don't know what it is about the science behind that, but okay. it works. All right. The fluffiness. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna see about that. Yeah. Uh, and see how that works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, do you have any other specialties from a cuisine perspective uh, mm -hmm. that's worth noting? If not, the school. You know, no. I want to put you. I'm about on to say the yeah. Slide. Hopefully, on blast. Okay. No. I'm good. As long as I, I just know that I season my food a lot, a little okay. too much. Okay. Like, so I, you add a lot of salt. Is that I what you do, saying? and I don't mean to. Like whenever I go out, I naturally just get salt. People are like, you didn't even taste it yet. Right. Right. But I don't know. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> salt is. It's like an old quintessential type of seasoning. Yeah. But when you know the other seasonings that could be used is something that really I think heightens the flavor. Yeah, it does. Kind of get into that and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but I won't I won't go into that that, <laughs> that tirade as far as the salt and intake and all that kind of stuff. But but yeah, that's that's always good. Now you also are a filmmaker. Um, yes. You know. How is that transition? Is that something you went to school for, or something that you've always been excited and, and interested in doing? Yeah, I've, I've loved the art of film for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. um, my mother bought my first video camera when I was 15 or 16 years old. Okay. And because um, one Christmas I was just like, I don't know why, but I just wanted the video camera. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Mom, please get this one for me. And generally, you know, you may ask for something for Christmas and you know you're not going to get it. Right. But she actually got me the video camera. Okay. And um, and when she got it for me, it was one of those old school ones that mm -hmm. you put slide the tape in. Right, right. So, I mean, you know, this is 2005. So, <laughs> so um, okay. it was one of those video cameras. But yeah. that's when I started making films. Ever since I got my first uh, video camera, I filmed everything. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to school for uh, film production. Okay. Uh, at the University of South Carolina. Okay. Um, and then I got my bachelor's from there. And then after, um, I probably, post graduation, I probably uh, produced over like maybe a dozen short films. Oh, nice. Yeah, wow, so wow, wow, wow. Okay, which is your biggest, you think, to date? Uh, you think, as far as most viewed? Most view? Uh, I know my, my zombie, uh, zombie film called, called Dead Day. Uh, did pretty well, mm -hmm. I guess in the wake of zombies, okay. um, you know, The Walking Dead, and that was hot in the in, in the 2000 teens now. Okay. Um, okay. So when I came out with Dead Day, people were just like loving it, mm -hmm. um, and that generated a lot of views on YouTube. Um, but after that, it's been kind of low key. Um, and then uh, I did a short film called The Boy and Boris. Okay. And that that's been doing really well in the in the film circuit, mm -hmm. and it's been on television on Inspire TV. Oh so, really? Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I would say that's probably one of the more more successful projects. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. So, uh, what was that process like? I mean, to be featured on you know a network? Yeah. I mean, is there like a uh, interview process is a submission. I know that there's usually mm -hmm. a submission process that, that goes along with that. Yeah, uh, kind of um, I guess it depends. The one of the uh, producers from the network actually just contacted me through email. Oh wow! And they saw my stuff off of YouTube. Oh cool! Um, which was interesting. Yeah. Um, she said, "Hey, we want to feature your short film um, during our film film block block." So. Um, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Just out of the blue. Hey, we want to show your film on TV. Never know who's watching. Yeah, you never know. That's awesome. So that, I think that's why it's important just to put your stuff out there and that's not right. wait. That's I think right. a lot of people just wait and they're like, I'm going to just wait time. for the right moment. No, yeah. you just got to make the right moment. Just you know? content. Just yeah, great content. content. Just great content. That's so important because yeah. yeah. someone's watching. Yeah. So um, that's how they hit me up. Okay. You know? Okay. That was awesome. That's awesome. Now, do you also write? Are you just primarily produce, or direct? I mean, is there a, a one skill set that you lean, lean into a little bit more than other, or mm. kind of do it all? 
I pretty much do it all. Okay. But I would say uh, video editing and like uh, direction. Okay. Like, directing those are my strongest points. Okay. Um, but I mean, at this level, you know, you kind of have to do it all. Right. Um, which I don't mind because I love the whole process of everything. Right. Right. Um, so I've learned a lot through the years. Um, I've always been really well at having a vision. Okay. And then executing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then through the years, I've learned about lighting and audio. Okay. Um, okay. And that's taken quite some time, but now I'm at the point where I can put something together that's good quality. Okay. So. Perfect. Yeah. So what, what do you think is like the the toughest thing about filming? You know, when you're doing a production, you know, you got the, the camera, the lighting, the sound. You know. I would say guerrilla style filming, where you're just winging it. Okay. So. You're chancing it. You don't know if you'll get kicked out of a location. You okay. Don't know okay. How many people will be there? People will jump in front of the camera. Okay. Yeah. If there's sound coming from five miles away that that's you true. can't get rid of, you know. That's true. So stuff like that that's okay. not controllable, you know. So when you do guerrilla style mm -hmm. type of filming, mm -hmm. do you normally go in with your regular camera, or do you have something a little bit more incog incognito, or no, you go full, all, you go full all in? Full okay. out, full mic, oh, yeah, really? Full. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I go for it. I'm like, if we get caught, or if someone says you can't do it, then we'll do, we just won't be able to do it. Oh, what are you yeah. gangster with? Yeah, okay. I, just, I feel like if you know, if you own a space, People can feel that energy. You know okay, I mean? like so, you. Oh, you're supposed to be. Like here. you're supposed to be. Yeah. Here. You okay. Know what I mean, that's why right. I try to act like, like, just act like we're supposed to be here. Right. Because if we actually <laughs> walked in with my camera today here, I mean, mm -hmm. we just, you know. Just yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so, if you had to, no judgment zone. It's somewhat my fault. Um, so you remember guerrilla style shooting? Yes. I tend to do that a lot. Uh huh. Um, I was shooting this thriller trailer, and um, I went to a local park in North Carolina. And it was maybe a crew of maybe five of us, three actors, okay. two crew members, and I had a fake rifle gun. <laughs> and oh. it was for the scene. Um, and in the scene, basically, the characters are being hunted by some robbers or whatever. Yeah. And um, they have masks, and you know, we had masks for them. Okay. And um, yeah, I had them around in the woods. I'm filming them, they have, they have the rifle. And it's a fake rifle. Um, and then when we first got there, the people, there were there was a marathon in the woods. It's weird, very North Carolina. Yeah. Um, and then so there was a water station, and near the, near the water station, there was like this house that people take pictures at. Okay. Um, so we were using the house for the scene. Mm. And the people were like, hey, how you doing? What are you guys doing? And we're like filming a movie, a little short film. They're like, okay, cool. As soon as we pull out the gun, they're like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Right. They call the cops, and um, we go from being nice to like having this huge argument. And they're like, you wow. shouldn't have, you know, a gun out. I'm like, this is a fake gun. It's not real. Right. Right. We're filming. Exactly. You know, it's not real. And then people are running by, and people are getting spooked because they think, like, you know, this is a real thing happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it went from one extreme to the next, and then the 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 park ranger came over, spoke to us. And we almost got arrested for it. And, oh wow! But it's part. It's my fault because you know when you have a rifle out, people don't know if it's fake or not. Right. Exactly. They're not trying to so, process that. Piece. Yeah. They're not. They just see that and they get scared. Yeah. So that's yeah. understandable. But it went from zero to hundred really quick. Yeah. So I guess that was a lesson for me. Okay. As far as you know, knowing when and where to do stuff. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, that was kind of weird. It just went from zero to hundred. Like they're like, oh, what are you doing? You're filming. Oh, right. nice. And With guns. Call the gun. Call the law. Right. <laughs> Nine one one. Right now yeah. it's like, okay, what are you doing? We're, we're gonna get right. you arrested. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah. Like, what what do you think has been like your wildest experience? Uh, whether on the road or traveling, you know, I'm sure you've been to a number of countries. Yeah. Uh, what has been like something crazy? Crazy, wild. Wow, like, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. Or has has there any been any like discrimination? Uh, that you has there. Oh, yeah, you like what? How, how long has this right. segment of dinner and dialogue? Right. We, we can get all into we that. Couple hours all right. <laughs> I, mean, well, I, uh, I can only imagine there's been some yeah. wild stories that That's you can a share. Good question though. Yeah. There has. Oh, there's been so many things that have happened. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to think of the wildest thing. I mean, this isn't too wild, but like, mm -hmm. I know there was a competition in San Paulo. Uh -huh. Brazil years ago. Okay. And um, it was an international team, and we were 
think we went to McDonald's or something like that. Uh-huh. And it was just a fun night. We were all teenagers and um, we were running back from the store. And I don't know, someone did something dumb to the point where the cops were chasing us. Oh, wow. Um, and then there were some dogs chasing us, too. Oh, what? Okay. And we ran all the way back to the hotel. But it was just funny to us because we're all track people. Yeah, so we yeah. That, nobody could catch us. That's a commercial. I mean, that would have been, <laughs> that like, been, a, been a commercial. It would have been. <laughs> running from the cops running with the dogs. The I mean, dogs I can only see In that. a different country. Right? Yeah, in a different country. Yeah, it was, we were just... Real ratchet. Okay, now did you have to jump over anything? Did you like, okay, now let me test my skill? Did you try anything? <laughs> I probably crazy? did jump over something. <laughs> try not to get hurt, you know, right? The concrete. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we're just wild kids. <laughs> they playing no games. Like, wow. <laughs> they said we do. We don't need the chicken thing. <laughs> That's a lot of chicken. That's just a lot of chicken. That is a lot of chicken. <laughs> that lasts me all week. <laughs> So you got the what kind of milkshake is that? I mean, tie dyed tie dyed milkshake. Yeah. Okay, and so it has like chocolate and it has everything. In it. Everything. In it. <laughs> everything in their cabinet. <laughs> right. <laughs> chocolate skittles, sprinkles, kind of candy, old school necklace, candy necklace. Oh yeah. Uh, of course, whipped cream. It's everything, and then of course you can see it better inside. Very colorful. Oh yeah, it's a lot going on. Yeah, it tastes you know like a regular little shape. It's nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy, but it's good. Though. It's really good. It's good. Actually, yeah. Well, again, thank you for another exciting episode of Dinner and Dialogue. I appreciate you, Mr. Dutch, for taking time out of your very busy schedule. I mean, you jet setter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know you're just hit in Atlanta for a short period of time, but again, thank you for carving out a little bit of time for Dinner and Dialogue. You know, like I said that, carving out a little bit, but uh, I, I got you. yeah, okay, well, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, if you know, just tell the people how they can get in touch with you, how they can follow you, see how, all the great things that you're doing out there. Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for having me again. Mm -hmm. um, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Dutch Filmmaker. Um, very simple, all one word, Dutch Filmmaker. Um, yeah, and usually I have everything on my social media. Okay. Things that I post. Yes, <laughs> and you are in charge of your own social media. So yes. So you post and you're commenting and you're oh, responding. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Very responsive, so all right. hit me okay. up, send me a DM, I'll most likely respond. Awesome.